Clara Barton, American Angel. Clara Barton had an aspiration. She had a dream, a will to change the entire American nation for the better. Clara Barton revolutionized America, from influencing the Civil War and its after effects to starting the American Red Cross, from giving children a chance to succeed to standing up for women's rights. She did it all. Throughout her life, Clara Barton was a leader, and her leadership has left a lasting legacy in our nation's history, whether it be as a nurse, educator, or supporter of feminine rights. Clara Barton was born Clarissa Harlow Barton on December twenty fifth, eighteen twenty one, in Oxford, Massachusetts. Clara knew from a young age that her life would involve teaching. She was always a child who strived to help, and later followed her dream by becoming a teacher in Massachusetts at age fifteen. After leaving Massachusetts, Barton had decided to move to New Jersey. She was appalled to find that New Jersey did not have the public schools she was so accustomed to seeing before. Barton desired that one day children around the United States could have the education they wanted, no matter their economic standing. Eventually, Barton would open a free public school in New Jersey. The institute thrived and even received money to expand. Along with the funds came new employees for the school, including a male principal who was paid twice as much as Barton. Frustrated and appalled, she left the school, claiming, "I may sometimes be willing to teach for nothing, but if paid at all, I shall never do a man's work for less than a man's pay." As a teacher, Barton never settled for less than a male, and later on made more life-changing decisions to back up her beliefs. For example, Clara Barton was the first female copyist to work at the U.S. Patent Office. It was a very unusual job for a woman at her time because it was a very responsible position and fairly well paid. She, along with other like-minded people, opened doors of possibilities for women to achieve their true potential. Clara Barton played a vital role in blazing a new trail, a route that stood for equality. She helped make it possible for women to work in any field they desired, and showed women that they could do anything that a man was capable of. Because of Barton's leadership, women in the United States can work in fields that were once only available to men. Indeed, Clara Barton fought for equal rights of women. She tied feminism to every part of her life. In her poem, "The Woman Who Went to the Field," Barton eloquently explains the role of women during the war, mocking the common stereotypes about women during the time. She writes, "The women who went to the field and pray, what did they go for? Just to be in the way. They did not know the difference betwixt work and play. What did they know about war anyway? What could they do? Of what use could they be? They would scream at the sight of a gun, don't you see?" Then later on, regarding the true role of woman during the Civil War, Barton writes, "She staunches his blood, cools the fever-burnt breath, and the wave of her hand stays the angel of death. She nurses him back and restores once again to both army and state the brave leader of men." In her passionate poem, Clara Barton clearly states her opinion that the participation of women was essential to both the welfare of their soldiers and the outcome of the war. The powerful last line of her poem labels these brave women as the nurses, consolers, and saviors of men. However, supporting feminine rights was not the only action that Clara Barton was known for. In early 1861, the Civil War broke out, starting with the Baltimore riots, and newly recruited troops flooded into Washington D.C. The residents of the city, alarmed and at a loss of what to do, were helpless in the mass chaos that ensued. But one level-headed woman saw the need for help, and soon started providing assistance for the soldiers. Later to be known as the Angel of the Battlefield during the Civil War, Barton was one of the first to volunteer to help injured soldiers at the Washington Infirmary. During the First Battle of Bull Run in July of 1861, Barton tended to the wounded, and afterwards she advertised in magazines to collect medical supplies. On August 3rd of the next year, Barton received official permission to transport supplies to battlefields. Just ten days later, Clara Barton arrived at the Battle of Cedar Mountain, where she spent days taking care of the wounded. According to her own account, when our armies fought at Cedar Mountain, I broke the shackles and went to the field. Five nights and days with three hours of sleep, a narrow escape from capture. She later showed up at many battlefields. Her arrival at the Battle of Antietam a year later, with three army wagons of supplies, was much needed, as was always her assistance. At the scene of the battle, overworked surgeons were trying to make bandages out of corn husks. Barton, after tending to the wounded, had organized able-bodied men to perform first aid, carry water, and prepare food for the injured, restoring order to the troops. A surgeon at the Battle of Antietam, Dr. James Dunn, describes her in this way. 
In my feeble estimation, General McClellan, with all his laurels, sinks to insignificance beside the true heroine of the age, the angel of the battlefield. But not only did Clara Barton serve as the angel of the battlefield, during the Civil War, there was no official system in place to document the dead and missing soldiers. Clara Barton had achieved fame during the Civil War, and as the war came to a close, the anxious loved ones of soldiers who did not return started to write to Clara Barton regarding their whereabouts. In order to respond to these letters, Clara Barton went through long processes of painstaking research. In 1865, Dorrance Atwater, a clerk and former prisoner at the Andersonville prison, contacted Barton, asking for copies of her list of missing soldiers. During his time as a prisoner, Atwater had been periled to work in the hospital and had record of all the soldiers that had died there. Together, Barton and Atwater went through the letters, as well as the Anderson Death Register and captured hospital records. They would erect many tombstones for these soldiers, and the families were informed that their loved ones had passed away. Later in 1865, after returning from Andersonville, Clara Barton would found the missing soldier's office. By the time the office closed two years later, Barton would have helped identify 20,000 missing soldiers. When we tend to think of America's most famous, we tend to think of grand. We tend to think of grandeur, we tend to think of wealth. And that is not the case with Clara Barton. Clara Barton played a critical part in the Civil War, but her role in the modern world is just as significant, if not more. Imagine that you need immediate medical care, or that a natural disaster has just occurred. Your plans for the future may have just been ruined, but the American Red Cross, a nonprofit organization founded by Clara Barton, can help you get back onto your feet. The journey of the American Red Cross began when Clara Barton visited Europe in search of rest in 1869. There, she was introduced to a wider field of service through the Red Cross in Geneva, Switzerland. The Red Cross could provide essential civilian disaster relief, as well as wartime aid. Subsequently, Barton read A Memory of Solferino, a book written by Henry Dunant, founder of the Global Red Cross Network. Dunant called for international agreements to protect the sick and wounded during wartime, regardless of nationality. Dunant had formed a treaty called the Geneva Convention between 12 European countries. Barton was touched by the Red Cross organization, and after returning home in 1873, Clara Barton fought for this treaty to be ratified in America as well. Finally, after eight long years, Clara Barton founded the American Red Cross on May 21, 1881. In 1882, the U.S. government finally approved of the Geneva Convention. Clara Barton led America towards a better path and gave them the proper means to be able to get themselves back on their feet after a natural tragedy. Today, the American Red Cross, a humanitarian organization that works in correlation with other Red Crosses throughout the world, is dedicated to helping people in need throughout the nation and the world. It provides disaster relief, gives people life-saving blood donations, helps support military families, and is the leading provider of the United States Health and Safety Services. The American Red Cross is a lasting reminder of Clara Barton's legacy and leadership. Generations of nurses, doctors, and health professionals strive to be the leader that Clara Barton was. She was confident in her abilities and molded the American Red Cross into an astounding charity. She refused to sit back and wait for the Geneva Conventions to be ratified in America. Instead, like the committed leader that she was, Clara Barton fought for what she wanted and created the organization we all know today. Despite all of her achievements, Clara Barton was only human and thus had faults of her own. Barton suffered from emotional breakdowns and depression. She contemplated suicide multiple times and even had to receive help from a sanitarium. People critiqued her management style, saying that Barton was often too harsh with her staff and kept poor track of her financial records, as she often confused her own money with the donations meant for her organization, the American Red Cross. Others believe that she was simply too old to be the president of the Red Cross, yet Clara Barton defied them until she departed the charity, arguing for her position. Clara Barton had faults and made mistakes, but her achievements far outweighed them, whether it be bringing supplies and assisting as a nurse on Civil War battlefields, founding one of America's most well-known humanitarian organizations, or creating New Jersey's first free public school. Clara Barton worked throughout her life to make lives easier and helped forge opportunities for the futures of others. Without this one woman, we would not have the wonderful organization known as the American Red Cross that helps people in times of need. We might not have the education that we are able to have today if it weren't for this wonderful and compassionate woman, Clara Barton. She helped America as a whole and will not be forgotten. Clara Barton's legacy, which spans from education to medicine to feminism, is still carried on to this day by her many humanitarian works. Clara Barton was an important figure in American history, and she will always be remembered for her leadership in times of need.